Have you ever wondered where iron for construction comes from? Or copper for wires comes from? Or the gold in ornaments? Where does that come from? How do we get lead to make pencils? How do we get metal to make pots and pans? Let's discover all of these things in this video in which we discuss about minerals and ores. Let's begin with discussing minerals. A mineral is a naturally occurring useful solid. A mineral has specific metals or compounds which are useful to us and they usually come out of rocks. Okay, what are some examples? This is an example of a mineral. This one is called magnetite. Magnetite is where we get our iron from. Let me give you another example. Mica. Mica is very useful right from makeup to generators to electrical industries to auto industries. A lot of them use mica. Now let's get to the next thing we want to discuss and that is ores. An ore is a source from which some metal or some other useful solid can be extracted, but extracted profitably. A mineral had to have some useful metal or some useful solid. On the other hand, an ore is a source. It's, it's from where you can profitably extract useful stuff. Let me give you a diagram to represent this. So. This is, let's say, all the minerals in the world. Not all of the minerals in the world are ores because only some of them allow profitable extraction. So everything useful is minerals and the ones, the minerals where we can extract the metals or extract the useful stuff profitably, those are called the ores. Let me give you an example to explain this with more clarity. Let's say I want to extract iron out of nature. Let's say I have magnetite. Magnetite has iron and 72% of magnetite is iron. Let's say I have something else and this one's called pyrite. Now these are not imaginary made up stuff. These are actually rocks or these are actually minerals that are there present in nature. So this is what pyrite looks like, all shiny and great. But the problem with pyrite is that it has only 46% iron. Now it's so because magnetite has way more iron concentration, it's profitable to extract iron from magnetite. On the other hand, with pyrite, because of the low iron concentration, it's not possible to profitably extract iron out of this. You could do it, but it would be very expensive. That makes magnetite an ore because it's relatively economical to extract iron out of magnetite, and pyrite does not qualify to be an ore. Both of them are minerals, but only magnetite is an ore, pyrite is not an ore. Okay. So I, I guess now you're pretty clear on what minerals are and what ores are. Okay, now let's discuss how there are two different types of ores. We have ores where we have elements, we have ores where we have compounds. Examples of both of those are uh, gold for elements, platinum for elements, or even silver and copper. All of these exist in their pure form. So they're not in some compound, these exist in pure form. And uh, it's very relatively, you know, easy to extract uh, metals in pure form out of the earth. For example, all you need to do is separate the mixture out and then you get the pure metal out. For example, let's say you have a rock and you have some silver here. You separate the silver out by boiling and heating and all of those kind of methods and then you get pure gold or platinum or silver or whatever. With compounds, on the, on the other hand, it's a little more complicated and we'll discuss that as well. Examples of metals that exist as compounds are aluminium, iron or even calcium for that matter, exists as a compound. So what does that mean? That means that aluminium and oxygen have a bond here. They have a chemical bond here. How then do we remove aluminium? We have to break this chemical bond. When we break this chemical bond, aluminium gets freed up and then we get pure aluminium out. That's how we get metals out of compounds. We'll come to a few more examples. An example here is bauxite. So uh, bauxite is basically an ore of aluminium. We extract aluminium out of this. This is a compound of aluminium and oxygen, just the way I was talking about uh, the example there. We have 55% of aluminium in this one. And because of this, it's pretty, uh, pretty profitable to extract aluminium out of this. Both because it has pr a pretty good amount of aluminium in it and also because the bond between aluminium and oxygen is pretty easy to break. Another example is calcite. Calcite, you may have guessed, is where we get our calcium from. 
this is actually a, an, a compound of calcium, carbon, and oxygen. So what we want to do is remove the carbon and oxygen, break this bond, and free up calcium. We have 40% of calcium in calcite. Similarly, another source for calcium is seashells, like these. These also have calcium, carbon, and oxygen. And again, what we want to do here is break this bond, and we get 40% of calcium. Now, you might be wondering, wait a minute, with pyrite, you said that with 46% of iron in it, it wasn't profitable to extract it. What's the big, why do we then make a, an exception and say it's profitable to extract calcium out of this? It, it's not just about the percentage of the metal, but it's also about how easy it is to break this bond and free up the metal. Okay, now all of these metals or all of these useful things come from what we call as mines. This is a picture of a mine. Usually we need to dig deep into the earth, we need to excavate layers of the earth away, and then we may find some useful stuff down there. And so a mine is actually the source of natural resources like ores. It's important to note that mines are often environmentally polluting. Mines are not too good for the environment. One should be a little careful before digging a large mine. That's it for this video.